White Raw has been on form recently. He's been playing extremely well in training games. He feels confident. I spoke to him behind stage just now, and uh -huh. he's feeling confident. Uh, and I probably, in my opinion, I'd swing it in favor of White Raw, but not by much. Probably like 55-45. It uh -huh. will be a close uh -huh. game. And you know, that, was, that is a potential advantage for the less known player because honestly, if you have made it to the final 32 here at the Steel Series land, you're going to be an extremely strong player. So this means that Thorzane obviously is going to be very, very talented. Um, but it means that White Raz had no chance to see what Thorzane's strategies are. Thorzane could have studied White Raz as much as he wanted to. And honestly, you can, you can execute a risky build if you're in Thorzane's situation and pull off a miracle win because, again, it's just best of one. Yeah, and both players do have capabilities to actually, like you were saying, study each other. Both players do play on Europe. Uh -huh, uh, and because uh -huh. of the features within Battle.net, you can review uh, build orders and whatnot. Both players know each other's style. And that's, like you were saying, uh, possibly a disadvantage in terms of uh, for, well, for White Raw, in terms of that he is so well known, everybody watches his streams, as you can see all the fans in the crowd. Yeah, You're yeah. You're okay there? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just redressing so myself. So the, the Thorzain can actually research deeply into White Raw and study every move, every slip up, that every mistake that White Raw makes that Thorzain can know and abuse. And that's, obviously, that's got to be something that he wants to concentrate to take uh -huh. down White Ra. So Thorzane did just log off and re-log back on. Apparently, there was an error on his computer. So, of course, we just love to build the tension, and we love to tease. Now, let's take a look at some of the matches that we have coming up after this series. It's going to be Mad Frog against Elfie. And then I think we're going to wrap up with what I would call the big crowd favorite for the Group A series, which is going to be Mad Frog against White Ra. Mm. So that is going to be quite a juicy. That is going to be so good. We are just checking uh, if players both are ready now. We're just waiting for Thorzine to re-enter. Everything is okay on the technical side. We are good to go. I'm ready to cast this game. I'm pretty sure you're ready to cast this as well. We're all ready to cast the game. White Ross in the game, but Thorzine's having some problems. <laughs> so we'll have to just wait for him a second. But going back to the map, um, yeah. I don't know what the statistics are on the map between Protoss and Terran. I don't think it's that much different in terms of balance within uh -huh. races. Now, I will say that, you know, Marines and Marauders have traditionally been the standard style of play mm. on that map. Um, actually, the standard style of play on most maps for Terran. But lately, Protoss have kind of hit this stride where if they make it to the 15-minute mark, it's extremely hard for Terrans to do much of anything. Um, on a map like Zelnaga Caverns, a lot of times that's okay because you have the backdoor entrance mm. to your natural. Your third base for Protoss, really no matter what it is, is going to be pretty vulnerable. And of course, drops in the main along the side are so potent. And so I think that that's a reasonable choice. And that's what Terrans have really been advancing with their, yeah. with their style of play as the, as the game develops. Terran players are actually starting to abuse, well not abuse such, as to use drops so efficiently. I mean, they, they'd move down with a bunch of Marine Marauders, and the Protoss player's like, okay, he's coming, I'm gonna get ready, gotta get ready. And then all of a sudden, there's a drop in your main, and all pros yeah. dying, you're losing key structures. And that's what players have been doing, and especially players like the Muslim, who have studied Terran so well, played it from the oh, day yeah, one in yeah, the beta. Yeah. That is what they do, multiple drops all over the place, and that's what White Raw has to be careful about. And I have great news, ladies and gentlemen. We are going into game one of the DreamHack 2010, first ever StarCraft II tournament. Give a cheer for Thorzane and White Raw. And here we are going into game one on Zelnaga Caverns. White Ra's big concern is Protoss. <laughs> his big concern is White Ra, is how is he going to take his third base? How can he protect that? And of course, Terrence is going to be how can he abuse mobility on this map? In the bottom left, we have White Ra spawning as the purple Protoss, more commonly known as the blue Protoss. And in the top right, we have Thorzane, the red Terran. And if we do look at the Group A, both players are in Group A, we have White Raw, Mad Frog, Thorzane, and Elfie. That, I mean, Thorzane, you know, looking at paper, doesn't look like he can come out of the group, but I really do not think we should underestimate him, as he's been showing some good results recently, just like White Raw has. And this is definitely an interesting game. Uh, Got to see what both players do do, though. I'm not sure how White Raw does like to play on this map, though. Uh-huh, and as we can see, Thorzane using a little bit of that adrenaline to help him up to the 250 APM range, throwing down a supply depot. Nothing too out of the ordinary at this point in time, but again, Thorzane is the sort of player who practices quite a bit. Would not be surprised to see him drill out a very interesting strategy in this game. And again, best of one, so players will be putting out their best show each time. Yeah, and the barracks has been put down here. Uh, totally standard, but we are seeing the pro move out now for White Raw. We'll be going up there to scout and just see exactly what's going on. He will scout the Thorzone, doesn't really have any wall off or anything, but that's not really key in this matchup, Terran versus Pros, that 
Well, compared to Brood War back in the day, it used to be so vital that you needed to wall off, uh -huh. especially because of um, you know forward uh, gateways and whatever. But in uh, StarCraft II, that's not really a problem, uh, as we do see the barracks in the main. The refinery also going down now for Thorzane. So it looks like the probe of White Raw whipped around to try to pick off this SCV a little bit, but Thorzane will manage to get the scout off. Uh, looks like White Ra is now heading up into the main of mm. Thorzane, sees that barracks getting thrown down. So there will be an orbital command coming up any second. Meanwhile, right, White Ra has just finished his gateway and his assimilator, and I love this pylon placement. Any Hellions that get at the back of this mm. base get blocked off, or any Reaper harass, which is becoming increasingly popular in this matchup. And there's a cybernetics core going down, so very standard openings in these first three minutes. Yeah, we're going to have to see what Thorzen does. He will be chasing now. Oh, look at this. He puts down oh, the second oh, oh. barracks and the reactor on the first. That's quite interesting straight away. Opting not to go for the, uh, for the factory as a lot of Terran players like to do. This is going to be extremely interesting to see how he's going to develop this build. And it did look like Thorzane threw down that barracks and then canceled to make sure that White Ra's probe had left his base and then immediately throwing down that barracks. And this is going to be very confusing for White Ra if he chooses to scout soon. This reactor takes so long to build that it looks like Thorzane is teching. It looks like there's no Marines at the front, so it's a very, very nice opening for Terran because it's so deceptive. Yeah, and we do have the second gas been put down for White Ra and this hidden SCV still in the base of White Ra. Uh, that I don't even think it's been detected at all, so he will be able to move down and scout out exactly what's going on. But if we look over at Thorzane's base, he has got the tech lab on, and it looks like we might be seeing some very early aggression from Thorzane. With probably, I'm going to suspect that he will be getting stim quite soon, as that's probably the vital upgrade uh, needed on that tech lab. White Ra's continuing to just poke around the front. He hasn't seen any Marines yet, but he just wants to be certain that anything that pops down that base he can spot and run away with in time. There's the concussive shell going down. It looks like Thorzane doing something a little bit more economically focused, probably a little bit more defensive, as like you said, Stim is that key upgrade. And there is a robo and a double mm. gateway opening for White Ross. So it looks like he wants to play it really safe, but man, Thorzane is feeling very comfortable right now as he has full vision of everything going on inside White Ross' base. And it looks like the SUV does go down and he will be moving out with this small uh, clump of Marines and Marauder. will be going down. The uh, shells are almost done as well. Stim won't be done by the time he gets down there. That will be the second upgrade, but he is going to move down, see if he can do any pressure to White Ross. And with going for this robo facility, uh, he's not actually going to have that many units out, and this could be a you know, put in White Raw under a lot of pressure very early on in this game. Yeah, White Raw almost certainly wanted to get an extremely fast observer out because, uh, oh, it looks like he just got a probe mm. in the main anyways, and that is going to be so huge for White Raw to get that big amount of information. He ordinarily wanted to get an observer out quickly to scout, but that probe managed to save the day. And uh oh, here's the big push, oh, and man. there's the force field that gets thrown down, cutting those units in half. And look at this great positioning. And by that was White a Ra. great reaction from White Raw. As soon as he scouted that with a probe, saw the second racks, he got the extra sentry out to help defend against this. And now there are no marauders and marines only, marines only left, so he is going to have to pull back. But at the same time, it looks like Thorzane is deciding to go for the command center. And White Raw's probe still alive and does see exactly what's going on. And now it looks like White Raw is going to be on the aggressive side. He knows that it's only marines without stim and very few marauders. Mm. So he's going to go ahead and push with this very small, very well-constructed force and take an early expansion of his own pylon going down. No observer getting constructed quite yet. Looks like that stalker is taking an early catch-up to this small band of units, but White Raw is going to have to be very careful because with that concussive shell, any units that are off-placed will get picked off. Yeah, he's definitely going to move back, and he, and he does decide to retreat with this, retreat with this small force. And he's going to go back down to his nexus. A ton of bunkers been put down, three bunkers down. A lot of SCVs been pulled off as well. He's probably just going to keep them there just in case of any kind of form of aggression from White Raw and then just transfer them onto the natural. You know, Diapolo, one of my absolute favorite moves is exactly what we saw here from White Ra. You move forward with a large force and then don't do anything with mm. it. You just walk right back home because it's made Thorzane build four bunkers. He doesn't want to lose a game of StarCraft in general, and he does, definitely doesn't want to lose one here on the big stage at DreamHack. So he's making way more defense than it turns out that he actually needs. And ordinarily, I would really dislike this very fast Robo Bay, but White Ra killed off a lot of units in that first push. 
And this SCV is moving down. It will get destroyed on the gold and denying scouting. And he doesn't has no idea about this next that's been put down. And this is looking really good for White Raw. He's having to send another SCV down here. He's going to move down to try and scout. He needs to find out what exactly is going on. He has not decided to use any scans on White Raw's base. So he's kind of clueless into what White Raw is going for. Absolutely. And I mean, as we look in Thorzane's base, all those bunkers have prevented Thorzane from getting any additional barracks. This is 400 extra minerals. That's almost three more barracks. There's the engineering bay going down for Thorzane, clearly intending to get some upgrades. There's the salvages going down on two of those bunkers. And kind of an intimidating push coming out right now for Thorzane. His combat shield is half done. And it looks like White Rush should be able to hold on to this. He has got the Colossus coming out. The Thermal Lance isn't quite done, though. It's only halfway. Uh, and then Forzane does decide to retreat and getting down a third command center, actually, Day 9. Wow. I think this is a very smart play by Thorzane. Again, a tribute to his practice. After going into big defensive mode and knowing that he don't, won't really have time to make those extra barracks because of all the bunkers he made, he just takes the opportunity to embrace his defensive position and go for the fast third command center. And that's actually going to really change into, well, going into the later mid-game. That's going to give him such a boost. And oh no, this probe is going to get in. It drops down a pylon, actually. Uh, the probe does die, though, and it forces the cancel on the pylon as the infantry army from Thorzan does see that. Uh, did he actually scout the third command center, though? That's what's important. And he did scout the third command center, so he knows exactly what's going on. Yeah, that's actually quite huge because White Ron now knows that there's going to be very little threat of a push happening for a long time. And look at this brilliant response by White Ron. Just throw down a forge, get a fast upgrade. You know your opponent cannot attack you for a very long time if that early third command center is down. So White Rod doing the smart move and taking a third himself, it appears. Yeah, he will be taking down these rocks and, like you said, taking down the third himself. And we look over in the base of those and he is getting plus one uh, infantry weapons, which is going to help out a lot, especially now the forge has been made and upgrades are going to be produced by White Rod as well, just to counteract each other. Great play. But at the same time as you were looking here, he is getting the double star put with the reactor on one of them. We're going to see a ton of Vikings out to actually help defend against all these classes which have been made. Now, this is a pretty extreme play by Thorzane. A lot of Terrans have been just really hating Marine and Marauder Balls against Protosses because force fields cut everything in half. So rather than get more Marines and Marauders, just get a couple and then go for the extremely fast double star port. Very new school kind of way to play. But if we look at White Raw's force, he has these two Colossi, but other than that, he really does not have that many units underneath. So I think a very no. smart play. What? And there's the plus one from White Raw. No, he really doesn't have that many units, even though the food count is basically right the same. And you know, he's going to come down and do trying to do a ton of damage to this third expo. Uh, he's going to have to lift it up basically straight away. Uh, probably lose that mule's worth. Yeah, he's going to lose that. Uh, nice play by White Rod, just keeping him off that third. White Rod doesn't really have his third himself. Yeah, and it does look like an SCV got all the way into White Rod's main and got yet another peek as to what's going on, but very smart gateway placement by White Rod. And that plus one is continuing to be chrono boosted. There's Thorzane retreating the command center, just continuing to mass up. And let's see where his force of Vikings has begun to compile. Oh, there is a whole bunch of Vikings pulling back. Looks like not too much damage has been dealt to White Rod's main force. Yeah, he has eight Vikings out now in total, and that's going to be really vital in the fight against White Ra. I mean, he has these three Colossus out. The thing that we're, look at all these Zealots, how Zealot heavy the White Ra actually is. Gosh, yes, so many Zealots coming out. That is the one danger of going for some sort of two-base Colossus play. You end up spending almost all your gas, so the only thing you can really afford anymore is Zealots. Not that they're bad units, but again, it kind of uh, can end up coming back to work against you with all the force fields you want to throw down to block off his units also get in the way of your own zealots and it looks like white raw is going to come down once again on the third denying it again this command center has been made for such a long time but he cannot use it to mine anything from this third base really really smart play by white raw knowing that he spent that 400 on the command center and just not letting him use it keeping these stalkers around and putting a lot of pressure on the thorzan but look at the viking count there are so many vikings this is an awful lot of Vikings at this stage in the game. We're just hitting now the 15-minute mark, and there's 12 Vikings out on the map. Thorzane now finally going to retake his third, but I think it's showing amazing patience by Thorzane, the fact that he's not too concerned with overcommitting here. Just playing very, very patiently, trying to get some of these Colossi off at a funky angle, and it looks like here's the cluster of Vikings. Needs to be extremely careful, and Thorzane doing the smart thing. Has one Marauder over at the right side, and most importantly, a Reaper here to bounce between these two bases so he can check for any expansion so he knows nothing is up in White Raw's base. 
Yeah, and now White Rod's actually giving him room. He wants to try and get this Marauder out of the base. Uh, the Marauder is going to go into everything, but the third base has been put down now for Forzane, and this is going to really boost his economy. It's going to skyrocket now. Uh, Zealot Charge is almost finished too. Plus two weapons is being researched. So this is, looks like White Rod is going to wait for Zealot Charge to go, and then it looks like he will be trying to attack into Thorzane. It looks like he might not even bother going to the third and just going straight down the natural. This could be really interesting to see how uh -oh. this plays out. Oh, the Stalkers are sprinting up, and there's the stem from Thorzane. Oh, so smart by White Rod. He just moves up, forces the stem, and pulls right back, and only one medevac out. She doesn't have enough juice to keep all those guys nice and healthy. So that is going to be a rough spot. Yeah, that looks like kind of a mistake from Thorzan that he hasn't really got any medivacs. He only has one. He spent all of his resources in the, in the production time on the starport for the Vikings. Now White Raw's going to go in. This could be crazy. Oh, and the Colossi are moving up to the high ground. He's going to try to pick off all these production structures. And oh no, he walks right into the main. Oh, this is going to be so hard to deal with. And the force field getting thrown out. Oh, oh my goodness. That is the kill zone for the Marines right there. All those Marines evaporating, but look at those Vikings one-shotting the Colossi with ease. But Thorzane is gonna be short on a main base in a moment. But he's, he's used stims. He used stim too many times. All these Marauders are so low health, and there were just so many charged zealots, and they're just gonna rip through these, and there are too many Vikings. Even though they are eventually gonna get these classes down, there's just no ground units left for Thorzine, and especially with no many vaccines. Lots of and at the same time, four zealots are on the third base of Thorzine, and White Rod dominating this game. Oh no, and it looks like Thorzine is out of main bases. And there's the final kill on the Colossus, but it won't be enough. There are so many zealots ripping through everything. Th Thorzane trying to do some nice micro, but only has these two barracks on the backside. So this is going to be so hard to deal with. And look at this gigantic force. White Rot moving in for the kill and another stim. And look at how low the health is on all those Marauders. Yeah, they're so low health, and these SCVs are just tanking damage, but it looks like White Raw is going to take this game down. There's nothing Thor Thorzine can do now. He's lost his third as well. He's down a one base only. It looks like he might be able to clean up this. I don't know, actually, if he lands these Vikings to be able to help, but I don't think so. White Raw is going to clean up this first game. And there's the good game. White Raw taking the first win in Group A. And as we were saying, it is only one game in Group A. And White Raw shoots straight up in first place in Group A, taking that game down extremely mm -hmm. cleanly. Execution, waiting for that zealot speed to be finished, and then going in, doing the damage, realizing that all the focus throughout the entire mid game was on Thorzine's third. And White Raw, being such a smart, intelligent player, sends all his units directly into the natural, and then just walking into his main, and there <laughs> yeah. was nothing he could do. Yeah, I mean, the very, very patient play by both players. I mean, I really liked how Thorzane was constantly checking if White Ra had a third, and when Thorzane realized White Ra didn't, Thorzane said, that's fine, I'll just wait until I can get a good opportunity to take my third, I don't need to rush it, I don't need to engage in an awkward angle, and that's really what White Ra was trying to force Thorzane to do. Constantly moving back and forth, and all it took was one little mistake by Thorzane, not keeping his main as protected as he should have, and the swing around from White Ra, and when he marched the entire army into that base, you saw those three little sentries lagging behind, you knew it was coming. And two force fields later, and Thorzane was awfully low on main bases. Exactly, just filtering the units on that ramp so the class could do as much damage as possible. And as soon as the Vikings even tried to come close, Stalker's sentries were there. I think, in all honesty, that Thorzane's mistake that game was that he just went far too Viking heavy. He expected White Ra to go a lot more Colossus heavy. Yeah, Therefore, yeah, yeah. having all these Vikings that really in the end battle just couldn't do anything. They were, they were trying to get shots uh -huh, off, but uh -huh. the ground army was not there. And he used all the production time on the double starport with reactors on Vikings rather than medivacs. And that was kind of key because he kept on using stim. White Ra even forcing him to use stim over and over and over. Yeah, yeah. Putting all his units into yellow and red health and then cleaning up the rest. Such patient, patient play by White Ra in that game. And I mean, it was a little bit too much.